Welcome again on our online teaching program. We continue today with our discussion on introduction to pathology. And me, Dr. Wilson Ngasa, I will be leading the presentation. On our objectives, as per the previous presentation, we managed to cover on the first five objectives, which are the definition of pathology, evolution of pathology, subdivisions of pathology, disease development, categories of the disease, leaving the last one which is about to explain on cell injury and cell death. And so today we will be discussing on the last objectives. So on our objective of cell injury and cell death, I've prepared for you sub-objectives, which are the overview of cell injury, causes of cell injury, and the concept of cell death as follows. Starting with the overview of cell injury, cell injury results when cells are stressed that they are no longer able to adapt, or when cells are exposed to inherently damaging agents or suffers from intrinsic abnormalities, which means that a cell, when subjected to a certain stimuli or to a certain cause of a disease, then this stimuli may lead to a certain pathogenic mechanisms and this mechanism may lead to a morphological or molecular changes within the cell. And so when this changes tend to occur at a certain stage, a cell has its own ability to recover or to regenerate and to and reverse to its normal functioning abilities. So, and these adaptations, when it fails to occur, it's when the cell injury occurs. So, injury may progress through an irreversible stage and later on, with a severe stress, it's go into irreversible stage. Which means that at a certain stage, there is the ability of the cell to be reversed back to its normal functioning abilities. But if left severe with severe stimuli or severe causes of a disease, it may lead into the irreversible stage or simply known as cell death. So reversible cell injury, as you have seen on the previous slide, in any stage or mild form of injury, the functional and morphological changes are reversible but only if the damaging stimuli is removed. So at this stage, although there may be significant structure and functional abnormalities, but the injury has typically not progressed to a severe membrane damage and nuclear dissolution. So once, when you remove the stimuli at this stage, a cell can regenerate and go back into its normal structure and morphological and even functioning ability. So another sub objectives on this part of cell injury and cell death is about causes of cell injury. The causes of cell injury tends to range from gross physical trauma, which are the large ones, causes of injury, to the single gene defect that results in a defective enzyme underlying a specific metabolic disease. So, a groups of cell injuries have been grouped into so many categories. We have these groups of cell injuries, which includes the oxygen deprivation, chemical agents, infectious agents, we have immunological reactions, we have genetic defects as causes of cell injury. We have nutritional imbalances, physical agents. Also, we have a group of aging. So starting with the first group of causes of cell injury, which is oxygen deprivation, hypoxia or oxygen deficiency tends to interfere with the aerobic oxidative respiration. And there is an extremely important and a common cause of cell injury and cell death. So when the cell is deprived of oxygen, it's a normal aerobic oxidative respiration, it's uh, aerobic respiration is impaired and hence if this process is impaired, the cell can let or can go into a certain injury. So hypoxia should be distinguished from the ischemia, which ischemia is a loss of blood supply in a tissue due to impeded arterial flow or reduced venous drainage. While ischemia is the most common cause of hypoxia, oxygen deficiency can also result from inadequate oxygenation of the blood, as in pneumonia, or from reduction in oxygen carrying capacity of the blood, as in blood loss anemia or in carbon monoxide poisoning. Another group which causes cell injury is chemical agents. There are a number of chemical substances which can injure a cell, but also even the harmless ones which, like glucose or salt. If sufficiently concentrated, can so the arrange the osmotic environment, then cell injury or cell death can occur. Even oxygen at sufficiently high partial pressure is also toxic, which can lead to cell injury. There are agents which are simply known as poisons, which can cause 
severe damage at the cellular level by altering membrane permeability, osmotic hemostasis, or the integrity of an enzyme or cofactor. And the exposure to these poisons can culminate in the death of the, even the whole organism. But also even the therapeutic drugs can cause cell or tissue injury in a susceptible patient or if used excessively or inappropriate. Another group of causes of cell injury is infectious agents. These infectious agents are so, so many organisms, including the microscopic ones, which are viruses, the are bacteria, the and the others are tapeworms, metal long tapeworms, fungi, and the protozoans. As another group of causes of diseases, of, I mean, causes of cell injury, is the immunological reactions. Although we know that the immune system tends to defend the body against the pathogenic microbes, but at a certain level, the immune reactions can cause cell injury and even a disease. For example, autoimmune reactions against one's own tissue and allergic reactions against environmental substances in gen genetically susceptible individuals are the ones which guide as the immune reactions which can cause a cell injury or even a disease to an individual. Another group of causes of diseases is genetic defects. These genetic defects can result in pathological changes. For example, not about, can be not the congenital malformations like, like in Down syndrome or as subtle as a single amino acid substitution like in hemoglobin S which is give rise to a sickle cell anemia. So genetic defects may cause cell injury because of deficiency of functional proteins such as enzyme in inborn error of metabolism or accumulation of damaged DNA or misfolded proteins, both of which tend to trigger cell death when they are beyond repair. Or another group which causes cell injury is nutritional imbalance, and this nutrition deficiency remains as a major cause of cell injury. For example, protein calorie insufficiency among an privileged population is only the most obvious example. Also, obesity markedly tend to increase the risk of type 2 diabetes mellitus. Not forgetting the diet leach in animal fats are strongly implicated in the development of atherosclerosis as well as in increased vulnerability of many disorders including some cancers. So another group which is regarded as a group which causes the cell injury is the physical agents and this physical agents tend to include the traumas, extreme of temperatures, radiations, electric shock, sudden changes in atmospheric pressure and this all have the certain effects to a cell as regarded as stimuli and may lead to cell injury. The last one group is aging. Here is aging the cellular senescence leads to alteration in replicative and the repair ability of individual cells and the tissues. So at a certain age, the cells of an individual tends to lose its ability to replicate and repair and to be repaired to its normal morphological or molecular and functioning abilities. So all of these changes result in a diminished ability to respond to damage and eventually the death of cell and of the organism as a whole can occur. So the last one, sub-objects we prepared on this part of cell injury and cell death is about cell death itself. <coughs> so as we have seen on the previous slides about cell injury, which tends to occur at the st stages of reversibility, the reversible stage, and the final into the irreversible stage. So with continuing damage, the injury becomes irreversible, at which time the cell cannot recover its and it tends to die. So there are two principal pathways of cell death. We have necrosis and there is apoptosis. And these two, they differ in their morphology, mechanism, and laws in disease and physiology. When damage to membrane is severe, enzymes leak out of lysosomes into the cytoplasm and digest the cell, resulting in necrosis. So cellular contents also leak out through the damaged plasma membrane and excite a host reaction which may lead to inflammation and so forth. So necrosis is a major pathway of death, of cell death in many commonly encountered injuries, such as those resulting from ischemia, exposure to toxins, various infections, and trauma. But when a cell is deprived of growth factors, or the cell's DNA or proteins are damaged beyond repair, the cell kills itself. It tends to kill itself by another type of cell called apoptosis. 
So apoptosis is something like a programmed cell death, which is characterized by nuclear dissolution without complete loss of membrane integrity. So there is a dissolution of the nucleus without complete dissolution of the membrane integrity. So apoptosis is an active, energy-dependent, tightly regulated type of cell death that is seen in some specific situations. So whereas necrosis is always a pathologic process, Apoptosis it, it serves many normal functioning and is not necessarily associated with pathologic cell injury. So necrosis is pathological. So cell, cell deaths occur due to a certain defects, but apoptosis is not pathological. It's not always pathological. It may be a normal functioning of the body to clear some defective cells. So this is a summary to show how cell injury and the eventual cell death occur. So starting from the normal cell, which is at a normal homostatic level, once when there is a stress or an in, in, I mean a stimulus which causes an injury to a cell, the, the, the cell it tends to adapt. It's it's up its way to adapt to that stress. And once when this adaptation is failed to to occur or inability to or for the cell to adapt, it leads to the cell injury so at a certain level of cell injury if the stimulus is removed or there is a mild mild effect of the stimuli and the stimuli is removed the cell can be reversed back to its normal functional ability but when the stimuli is left there for long periods or the stimuli is at a severe amount it may lead into the irreversible injury and at this level when the cell is at irreversible injury the two ways or the two principal ways of cell death can occur either by necrosis or by apoptosis and then may lead to cell death so these are the summaries or key points on this topic of cell injury and cell death so cell injury results when cells are stressed so severely that they are no longer able to adapt or when cells are exposed to inherent damaging agents or suffer from intrinsic abnormalities that we have seen for as as explained for the previous slides. The causes of cell injury range from the gross physical trauma to a single gene defect that result in a defective enzyme underlying a specific metabolic disease. So there are some questions for self-evaluation. So you students, after discussion of this topic or this objective. You are supposed to be able to explain for the following questions. What is the meaning of reversible cell injury? To differentiate the two principal pathways of cell death and what are the causes of cell injury? And these are the references which you may use to improve your knowledge on pathology. Thank you.